Hello, people of the internet. Welcome back. You guys hear that guy's tires? He's so cool. Anyway, welcome back to the bench. He's got a fresh paint job. What do you think? Shining, right? Uh, anyway, today we're going to do another bench vise restoration. And I'm excited about this one. Well, I say that probably every time because I think I'm always excited. But anyways, let me uh, introduce you to today's project. Oh. Oh my. Oh. <sighs> there it is. <coughs> it's heavy. It's made of metal. It has uh, it's got one of these. And uh, it rotates. That's kind of cool. This thing does that. I think that's it's pretty smooth. <clears throat> it's a little rusty, but we like rusty things. Then we could fix them up. You guys probably can't tell from where you are. But that says F, M, and V Co. Alville USA. Alville NY USA. So I've done some Googling on the uh, interweb. And F, M, and V Co. stands for Fulton uh, Machine and Vice Company. And they are based, or were based out of Lowville, New York, USA. Now, Lowville, New York, for those of you who don't know, is not very far from Watertown, and I happen to be from Watertown. I don't live there now, but that's where I was born. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and that was, uh, that was one of the reasons I paid as much as I did for this. I probably, um, let me just, whoop, 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 there. I probably paid more for this one, like I didn't haggle very hard because I just wanted it um, because it looks like it's in pretty good shape and it's from Lowville I'm from Watertown Mr. Fulton I forget his first name uh, there's a really good uh, little post on the garage journal forum that talks about um, the Fulton machine and vice company it's a quick little history and Mr. Fulton uh, was from Watertown and uh, he eventually went to work for uh, Prentice and he worked for a couple of advice companies as well I believe. Uh, anyways, this sucker is pretty heavy. It's the only vice that I have that has pipe jaws, pipe jaw inserts so that's kind of cool. Um, the jaws look to be in pretty good shape. They're not totally deformed. There's still some uh, some teeth left. I am going to put on some music which I don't have copyright permissions for so then I'm going to clean everything up and bring it back. Um, Alright, I've got the main body and the dynamic jaw all cleaned up. Uh, they're actually in pretty good shape. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, now this vise has the pipe jaws, so the body has two and the dynamic jaw has one that kind of fits in between these two and these they're held in place by a couple of grub screws. There's one on either side, one here and one here and it's interesting to me because both of these screws and the other screw, the grub screws, are broken. So they were originally like a standard screwdriver, like a slotted screwdriver, you know, straight blade. And it's, they're cracked off. So my guess is somebody tried to take these out and the set screws were frozen in place with rust or something. And it snapped one of the, uh, you know, the, the blade of the screwdriver goes in the slot and rotates this way. This just boop, broke right off. So you, I, I put some croil on both of these and I'm going to see if I can get them out with a pair of pliers and if I can, awesome, I'll get these out and then I'll clean them up. Um, if I can't, I don't, I really don't want to 
I don't want to damage anything more than it kind of already is. So if I can't get them out, I'll leave them in. So I'm just grabbing what's left of the, uh, the top of the screw. All right, I think I got this one coming. I got about three quarters of a turn, that's good. So here you can see where it's broken at the top there. And the other one is the same thing. But now that I've got that set screw out, the jaw came right out. So uh, I will, you can see where I was able to get with the wire wheel. I'll clean this up on the other side as well. See if I can get this one. All right, it's coming. Oh, that loosened right up, and it got tight again. The threads on this one are pretty messed up. I'm gonna put a little more croil in there. And then work it in. Yeah, work it baby, work it. Ugh. It won't come out enough. So let go of this jaw. All right, that does not want to come out. That's staying tight. There we go. So there's the other one, also broken. The, uh, the threads look okay on it. I'm not really sure why it was so difficult to get it out. Well, actually, looks like they've been, there, there's a little bit of galling on near the tip. I have a thread file, a uh, thread repair file, so I'll probably clean these up before I put them back in. All right, so now I'm just gonna clean up these uh, pipe jaws. I'm just gonna use the wire wheel on my bench grinder here. I'm not gonna bother showing you that. Okay. I got the two jaws from the body of the vise cleaned up. They look pretty good. And now I have the dynamic jaw that still has the one pipe vise or pipe jaw still in it. And it has one set screw just like the others. And just like the others, this set screw is broken. But what's interesting here is it's broken, it's cracked, but there's a piece still like the broken piece is still in here. So the, you know, if this is the slot for the screwdriver to slide into, this piece that's broken off is still threaded in there. So it's loosey goosey. And when I twist, because it's broken, it pushes against the threads and actually makes it harder to turn the screw. And because it's in far enough, I can't get pliers on it to grab it and twist it without pushing it, expanding the screw head or the top of the screw. So we're kind of in a weird spot. And it won't, it won't come out. Well, there you go. There it goes. All right, now, maybe, oh, 
Maybe I'll be able to rotate this out. Maybe I'll get lucky. This one's really tight. So I keep, uh, I keep putting some croil in here and working it back and forth, trying to get the croil to seep down through the threads. Is it just me or am I the only one that really likes the smell of croil? I don't know you guys, my hand's starting to hurt. If they weren't so black with oil and schmutz, they'd probably be red. They're ouchy. Ah, oh, fuck. And there is the other ear. So now, I cannot tighten or loosen that set screw, and this is not coming out. You know, I was thinking to myself, man, this vise is in great shape. This is gonna be easy. I took it apart and I thought, yeah, this is, this thing's in great shape. I should not have had that thought. I regret it. All right, well, I've got some, I've got a, an assortment of easy outs here and I have a feeling this one's too big. Yeah. But uh, I've got two that are number threes. So I'm going to attempt to, um, I'll probably drill this out, put my easy out in there, get that stuck, and then break this off and then just uh, have to give up my uh, YouTube channel as a complete failure in vice restoration. So let me regroup here and I'll bring you back once I have everything I need to keep going. Okay, we're down in the basement and I have to apologize in advance for the air conditioner noise. Um, at some point it may kick off, it may not. Sorry, it's hot out. So here's what I've done. I have the dynamic jaw clamped securely, I hope, to the drill press, which is now locked down. Um, and here is the that set screw that I broke. I put a center punch in the middle there and I'm going to drill a hole to try to drill it out and I have this uh, easy out extractor. This is a no size number three and it says right on it to use a 5 30 seconds drill bit so I have a 5 30 seconds drill bit. Um, I don't have cutting oil uh, but this is cast iron so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, unless the screw is not cast iron and then it should still be fine. It's not a big deal. Um, I've got my drill press slowed down to the lowest speed that it will go. Um, let's see here. I've got a speeds and feeds table. And my table says I should be at about uh, 600 ripums. So I'm going to double check that. Nope. 1,000 ripums, so we're going to turn this on and adjust the speed to 1,000. Okay, that's 980. This, this drill press has a little digital readout. I don't know how accurate it is, so I 
980 is probably close enough. Um, so let's uh, let's drill a hole in this and see if we can uh, get it out. Okay, that worked pretty nicely. They're decent sized chips. I'm happy with that. Um, I was hoping I was gonna be able to do this without having to take it all out because it took me like five minutes to get this balance just right on here, but it's gonna have to come off uh, to get the easy out in there. So let me get this out and I'll bring you guys back. Okay, here I have my extractor, easy out, whatever you wanna call it in a little T-handle. And here's the offending screw. Push that down in there. And this has got flutes cut in a reverse direction, so as you twist it... Oh, Jesus, guys, that's in there. I can hear the crinkling of metal, and I'm not sure if it's stress in the easy out. Oh, fuck. All right, that's not it. The, this number three, oh. So this number three um, extractor, is a little bit small. If I can get this to focus, come on, thank you. It's a little bit small for this T-handle and it has rotated in the handle. So it's not, it's, it's spinning here instead of spinning the screw like it's supposed to. So I'm gonna try to get this out of here. All right, that's in there pretty good. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I got the extractor out of the other tap wrench and I have a uh, Chineseum tap handle here and this is more appropriately sized. So let's see if we can uh, make this work. I don't know how good of a shot this is gonna be for you guys. Probably not very good. Ease. Oh, it's turning. You guys can't tell because I'm blocking all the light, but it's going. I don't, I really can't imagine why this is so tight. coming. Well, focus. Come on, you can do it. Okay, so I was able to back the broken screw out enough that I could get the jaw out. So that's that's good, I'm happy about that. Now let's see if I can get this out the rest of the way. Ow. I can smell the croil. Ouch. It's gonna fight me the whole way. This is a long one. 
It's getting looser now. There. I got it. It looks, it looks to me, I don't know that the camera will pick this up, but it looks to me like this screw at the very end is bent up. So my guess is when this was, it, I'm sure it was straight. Let me focus again. Sorry guys. So I'm guessing it, this screw was straight when it went in here. And at some point when the jaws were, the pipe jaws were used, it probably bent the grub screw or the set screw that held it in place. Framing, get it in the frame. So this sits in there and this probably, something went wrong and it bent the end of that screw. So you're trying to get, like, imagine trying to get a, a fish hook out of a straight hole. That's what, that's why that was so messed up. Now, this, I believe, is just a standard 3 8 16 um, thread size. So I have a 3 8 16 bolt, and that's threading in just fine. So that's good, because that means I can make my own little set screw and replace that, the one that I just destroyed. And uh, the threads themselves, the female threads in the jaw itself are fine. So that is a win. So uh, I'll show you guys how I make a couple of new set screws, because remember, the other set screws for the main body of the vise, those are pretty messed up also. Um, so I'll make some new ones. But uh, first things first, I got to, uh, ew, gross, I got to clean this up. Um, get it clean, nice and happy, and then uh, I'll start working on some set screws. Okay, we're at the other vise. I have a lot of vices, if you haven't figured that out by now. Um, what we're gonna do is make the set screws. Um, and it's, it's really easy to do a set screw. Um, all you need is something to hold the new piece of hardware that you're gonna work on. A hacksaw or an angle grinder if you're impatient and like sparks flying everywhere. Um, and I always like to have the original pieces of hardware that I'm replacing uh, handy because then I can, it kind of just helps me figure out, all right, where am I going to cut, cut the new, the, the replacement bolt off. So what I'm going to do is kind of line these up and uh, this is the this is the one that we just that we had to drill out and use the extractor on for the dynamic jaw, and it's longer than the set screws on the on the body that hold the two jaw pipe jaws in the body. So I've got one piece of hardware here, one new bolt, and it's I'm basically just going to cut it right where the threads stop. So I'm just going to clamp this up with my vise here. And I've got my handy dandy Cornwell hacksaw. I, uh, I did a cleanup job on this. I got this for like $20 shipped um, on eBay. And it's made in the USA. And I got some American made saw blades for it. I'm telling you, eBay, eBay's where it's at. Now, all I'm gonna do is cut the head of this bolt off and try to do it straight. And I do have a cardboard box to catch the chips. Whoa. 
smooth. Like a baby's butt. Okay, now, I'll get this out of here and there's a bit of a burr. So I'm just gonna get a file and kind of clean that up. I'm just filing this until I can I don't see any more of the saw blade marks. Then I know I've got a nice flat surface. Flat enough. That's, I'm not talking like precision ground flat. It's a hacksaw and a file, guys. Okay. Done. Now You just take your hacksaw and carefully start your notch for your screwdriver. Now, the problem with this is that the hacksaw blade is pretty narrow, it's thin, compared to, you know, a nice good sized screwdriver. So, you know, a big screwdriver doesn't really fit in there. So I'm not going to bother going too deep with this. Really, all I want to do is get it started, and what I'll do is um, I will cut the notch in this uh, with the uh, angle grinder because the blade or the disc on my angle grinder is wider. Um, so that's one down, two to go. So this contraption here is what bolts the body of the vise to your bench or your work surface. And it's just a three quarter, 10 inch, or <laughs> three quarter inch, 10 thread per inch uh, hex bolt and at some point somebody welded a piece of rod to it to give you something to turn it with. Um, I don't know, I have mixed feelings about it. Part of me thinks that's very handy and I appreciate that. Uh, another part of me says, "Why, you know, this is not original and I don't like it because it's not original. Um, and it's bent, so I don't know. I think it's gonna stay for now, um, and I may at some time cut this off and dress this uh, so that it looks more original. I'm not sure, but interesting. I was uh, I hadn't cleaned this bolt up yet so it was kind of off to the side and I hadn't done anything with it and you guys haven't seen it until now um, but I've got pretty much all the other parts um, cleaned up here's the sliding jaw with the main screw reinstalled and the body and I was putting it back together and the, the nut is in here and usually these things come with a hole with a pin in it and that's what keeps the nut from backing out and I couldn't figure out for the life of me what was going to keep the uh, the nut from sliding out when you reverse the, the sliding jaw out. It's this thing. You screw that in the bottom of the, the vise all the way and it applies pressure to the bottom of the main nut keeping it in the dovetail. Um, Pretty clever. I've not seen that before. It's very simple and it saves you having to mess around with a, a pin at all. So that's kind of nice. Good morning internet friends. It is bright and ugly uh, on Thursday. That's my Thursday. Not, it might be your Thursday. I mean, there's a one in eight chance, right? Anyway, um, let's finish this up. Let's put this back together. Uh, I think the last time we talked I was making some replacement set screws for the uh, 
what you call it, pipe jaws, and I got these all cleaned up. And I did make um, three little grub screws or set screws to replace the ones that were pretty messed up. So let's put this back together. Let's start with the pipe jaws. So these go, these half jaws go in the, uh, the body. Vice, I my screwdriver. And each one gets a set screw. I've got, uh, Stuff in the way so you guys can't see. When I was making these set screws, I had to make one of them longer than two of the others because the the casting here on either side of the uh, pipe jaws is thinner than it is over here on the dynamic jaw. So I want to make sure I've got my two short set screws. And I do, so that's good. I just noticed one of these where the uh, where I cut the slot. Focus. Maybe. Is anything in focus? No. Because I have the manual focus on. Uh. Crying out loud. Okay. Anyways, I cut the slots in these screws with the angle grinder. Um, I got them started with the hacksaw, but there's some burrs. Uh, so I'm just going to take, I have a triangular file somewhere. And I'm just lightly going to run one of the edges of the triangular file through the thread that has the burr. There we go. And I'll check all of them. I didn't bother to check. That one's good. And that one's good. Okay. So here you can see the... Uh, Pipe jaws are in place, and they weevil wobble, they weevil wobble around in there quite a bit. Um, but that's where these set screws that go in the side are going to come in handy. So I'm going to get that started, and I'll get this one started, and I'm going to put a little drop of oil on the threads because I really don't want them to get stuck in there like they did before. Um, because that was a pain having to remove them. So I'm just, I've got a little oiler here. And I'm just putting a drop of oil on the threads. And I'm just spinning those in here. One. And two. Now, I'm not sure if anyone here can see this, but when you put the set screw in there, it shoves, it pushes the pipe jaw over that way and this one is pushed over the other way so they're kind of they're kind of bead in there and I don't know that's oh I guess it would help if I did line these up properly let me set the GoPro down
Maybe this one goes over here. They don't line up great, the holes, or the impressions. The little, uh, there's two dimples. Two out of, there we go. There's two dimples. Um, well, there's a dimple for each jaw where the set screw goes in and engages. And they don't line up particularly well. Um, and I can see, you know, even the dimples here on this jaw are kind of deformed where it looks to me like the set screw was kind of off to the side a little bit and over years of use it kind of just wallered the, the hole out so that they're not, they're not round anymore. And in fact, this one was kind of mushroomed up and I did file the uh, mushroomed material off so it didn't stick out. So you can kind of see that shiny spot but uh, I don't know they're in there they're fine that'll work um, my set screws are kind of long which I think I think they're they're the same length as the set screws that I took out but because the profile of the bottom is different they stick out a little bit more they catch on the outside so these are fine. They're perfectly fine. They're absolutely usable the way they are. But I, knowing myself, I'm probably going to have these out at some point and grind the bottom profile to match. So the profile of the original set screw, which is this guy, has a is conical, and this is the one I made, and it's flat. So the outside edge of the new one is catching. So it's not going into the dimple as far as it does with like this one. So the result is when it's threaded in, it sticks out more, which kind of annoys me. Um, but that's okay. It'll be all right, Justin, it's fine. Okay, so that's that. So now let's do this guy. Same system, just slide it in. And there's a threaded hole here and I'm just gonna oil my bolt. For good measure. That started, send it home. Oop. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. There we go. Yep, some. Okay. There. Now this one, because the hole, the dimple in the jaw where the set screw, you know, is received, um, it's deeper and, and it's a little bit wider on th this jaw than it was on these two jaws. So the set screw actually went all the way down and bottomed out. So it's actually below flush um, here, which is fine with me. Um, I'm happy with that because it doesn't stick out. So now, we can put the jaw back in the body of the vise. Um, I've already installed the main nut in here. That's in there already. And now I can, again, get some oil. And oil the surfaces that the the bar is going to slide on in there, the bottom of this thing that you can't see because it's not zoomed in. Uh, 
Alright. Oof. So that's just gonna slide in like so. Ooh. I don't know how much this vice weighs, um, but it it's heavy. It's a heavy vice. I mean, I've got other vices, obviously, but this one, considering that it's not like, you know, I have, I've got a, a Monarch swivel base that is a uh, five inch jaw, and this is only a three inch jaw. This is heavier. I've got, I've got a reed. I forgot to, forgot to oil the nut, you guys. What are my nuts? Can't forget the nut. All right, plenty of oil in the nut now. Where was I? Oh yeah, I've got other vices that have larger features than this one. And yet, this one. Is uh, this this is heavy? Um, I'm not sure if you guys are noticing, but as I rotate the screw in, there's like a little chatter right there. Did you hear that? There it is again. I find that a drop of oil behind so this uh, this round bulby looking acorn. I don't know what this is called. If you know what the, the technical term for this thing, this part of the screw is where the, the cross handle goes through, if you know what this is called, please leave a comment. But I put a, a drop of oil between the back of it and the front of the dynamic jaw, and it just smooths right out. Couple of glugs of oil. Whack it on the bench. Oh yeah, so much smoother. Oh, bam. And our pipe jaws clear each other. So the so this jaw, you guys can't see that. Okay. So, there we go. So here, this is, the so this jaw slides in between these two other jaws and I was just double checking to make sure that as uh, as I tighten the main screw here you know you've got the two pipe jaws and the body and the one here you're just making sure that it slides in nicely Okay, now this is interesting. I'll bring the GoPro over here. You guys may be able to see that. So this screw, whoop, this lead screw is tightened all the way, like it's stopped, but the jaws are not touching. So my guess is my set screws have misaligned, my homemade set screws have misaligned the pipe jaws so that they stick out further. So they are causing interference with the main jaws of the vise, which is a bummer because now I have to do something about it. I was going to... 
I was going to be lazy, you know, because it's like early in the morning. I don't feel like doing a whole lot besides like putting it back together and calling this project done. Um, but these homemade set screws here are not good enough. So what I will have to do is take these out, grind them down uh, so they have a better, uh, a better fit. And then these pipe jaws in here will fit more accurately. This is camera reception here. See this? Camera, camera. Can you can you see yourself? Can you see yourself? Can you see? Is this thing on? Oh, sorry. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to uh, take these set screws out, and I will uh, clean them up so they fit better. Put them back in, and my guess is once that happens, these jaws will sit further back and will not cause any interference. Uh, a quick way to test that theory is to loosen. I'm going to loosen these set screws so they're not really holding the. Uh, Jaws. So I back those off. So now I'm like, yep, there you go. Now this is closed. Good contact there. So I think actually. It was the single jaw in the um, in the dynamic or the single pipe jaw and the dynamic jaw that was uh, kind of screwed up. So I wonder if now that I've got them kind of loosey goosey, if I can. Screw that in. Okay, so this is where I'm going to put that clip probably about the main nut being loose and me not being able to figure out how the heck the main nut is held in place. So you'll notice I'm reversing this. And now I'm going forward and nothing's happening, nothing's happening. Okay, now it moves. Now I'll reverse it. Nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing ha Oh, okay, so I get three full turns before this thing moves. That is the main nut sliding rearwards in the dovetail channel. And when I bought this from the guy, I gave it a couple of turns and it, and it was sloppy like this. It wasn't this sloppy. It was like a, like like one and a quarter turns. And I was like, well, that's not great, but I can live with that, you know. Um, now that I've cleaned this up, the dovetail groove that the main nut sits in is no longer caked and packed full of grease and grime and schmoo. So it's free to move in that dovetail channel and that's what it's doing. It gets about know, almost all the way to the back and then there's a little bit of a, a burr or a lip and it gets caught there and so that allows this to come out. But I was like how the heck, how the heck is that kept in place? You know? And I even posted something, I posted some pictures and a question about it on the Garage Journal forum. Uh, they have a, um, they've got a thread that is just about vices. If you like vices and you don't know about the Garage Journal, just like Google the vices of Garage Journal. It's a thread with literally like over 3,500 pages of pictures and information about vices. It's fantastic. I lurk on there all the time. Um, there's a lot of information 
on there that you will not find anywhere else. Um, if you have an affinity for old vices and you find one and you don't, you know, you don't have much luck Googling uh, to figure out, you know, when was this made? Who made this? What is this? That kind of thing. Check the garage journal. Somebody there probably already answered all your questions. Um, anyways, post the garage journal. How the heck does this nut stay in place? And this is the mounting bolt. So this threads through the bottom of your work surface up into the bottom of the body of the vise. And there was two guys, uh, Mr. Mayer and VA Grousman. They like they were on it like I don't know, like flies on shit. They just had it figured out. They're like, oh, you screw this thing, you screw this into the bottom of the vise and that hole that you thread this into is in line with the dovetail groove so the bottom of the, uh, well, the top of the bolt makes contact with the bottom of the dovetail and as you tighten this down to your bench it forces it upwards into the, you know, the groove of the dovetail and that sucker's not going anywhere and they are absolutely correct. So until I mount this to a bench this slot, this play is always going to be there. That's just the way it is until I get this mounted and this bolt, this mounting bolt, pushes up on the, the main nut and the dovetail. So that is that, guys. Um, I am not going to bother filming me correcting the set screws. I'm just going to put the grinding wheel back on my angle grinder or uh, bench grinder and I'm just going to grind a V profile on the ends and set those and these should sit deeper. They shouldn't stick out right now. They stick out about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch um, on, on both sides. So I'll, I will, uh, I'll do that off camera just cause it's, it's less video to have to edit. Um, but there it is in all its beastly glory. Oh God, coffee. That was close. Oh, I did spill. I have a biscuit. Hold on, guys. Oh. Oh. There it is in all its glory. I'll get you guys some measurements. So the jaws are four inches wide, and they're hefty. Look at the size of these. It's like three inches almost of jaw material. It's pretty thick. I guess, I don't know. I've got a couple other bites down here that are pretty hefty too. That athel, this is an athel. That's pretty gargantuan. Anyway, the uh, slide on this, or the moving jaw bar, whatever you want to call it, it's about 11 and a quarter inches, 11 and a half. The handle on this is three quarters of an inch thick, which is thick. I mean, I think all my other vices here, down here, these are half, half, or five eighths maybe. So this thing is, it's, it's, it feels nice in the hand. It's very large and in charge. Um, well, let's keep the comments clean on that one, guys. This is a family channel. But, uh, sorry, I got excited over here, guys. DSLR camera people. I didn't forget about you. I just, I have a, I've got a GoPro and I just got it yesterday and I'm having fun with it. So I'm struggling to figure out how to use both at the same time. Um, I didn't forget about you. So let's zoom you guys back in. So FM and V Co, which stands for Fulton Machine and Vice Company, Lowville, New York, USA. It's interesting to me the L here for Lowville is missing.
It doesn't look like it was ground off. It just looks like it wasn't cast into it originally. So, I don't know, that's kind of cool. It's uh, missing, missing a letter. So, I'm not sure. I really think this is cool. I like this vise a lot. It's a, it's a good size. It's very, uh, I don't know. It's a very usable size. It's, it's massive enough that it'll do pretty much whatever you need it to do. Um, you know, especially if you're just like a home gamer like me. Um, you know, I'm not a welder. I'm not a fabricator. I don't, I'm not a blacksmith. Um, but it's big enough that I could do pretty much anything I would need to do with it. But it's not so big. It's not like a 108, like a Reed 108. I'd love to have one, but it's just, I don't have a need for something that big. You know, where would I put that? I could hardly lift it. Um, these, these are my bread and butter. I love these things, like a four, four and a half inch jaw, five inch jaw. It's perfect. It's a lot of vice. They're heavy, they're heavy duty. They, they absolutely do not make vices like this anymore. You can walk into the Harbor Freight or the Home Depot or Lowe's and you can buy, you know, a Chinese cast bench vise. You know, it's like the little cute little thing. It'll sit, you know, it'll be about this tall, so half the height, and it'll have a four inch jaw, but you know, it'll be like an inch thick. The jaws will be an inch. This part will be an inch thick. This is three inches thick. This is, I mean, and the thing, the new one that you can buy today will weigh 15 pounds, 20 pounds. This was meant to last a lifetime, clearly, because Fulton Machine and Vice Company, they were in business between like 1905 and 1930. It's 2019 and this sucker's still running. So this is like, you know, a ballpark 100 years old and it's like brand new. And I've just cleaned it up and I'll never abuse it. I mean, I'm never going to put a cheater bar in the handle. I'm never going to, I'm not going to do that. So, you know, my grandkids, if I ever have them, could be handing this down to their kids as long as they take care of it. Like, that's the thing. If you don't abuse these things. All right, I don't know where the DSLR cut out, but it doesn't matter. I was just ranting about the quality of old tools. They're better. This is a million times better than anything you're going to get new today. Unless you buy a new American-made vice, you can still get them. Wilton is still making vices in the USA, but they're like a thousand bucks. And honestly, they're still probably not as good. I, I would pay $200 for this over a thousand dollars for anything new made today, or even a hundred dollars for anything new today, because a thousand dollars is crazy. But 200 bucks. I would pay $200 for that. I'm going to cut all this out. I, I, guys, I'm ranting. I haven't even had coffee yet. I haven't even had a sip of this yet. It's so freaking hot. I'm all fired up, you guys. Anyways, I guess that's about it. This sucker's back in action. This, uh, this was a fun one. It, there wasn't too much cleanup to do. There wasn't, it's not too much of a restoration, but I did enjoy getting to, uh, get that broken bolt out. I, I would have preferred not to have broken it in the first place because then I could have used the original set screw and the more original it is, the happier I am. But uh, the reality is all three of the original set screws were pretty well screwed up. Uh, no pun intended. They, I mean, all three of them were broken. So, well, yeah, it is what it is. So I've got new set screws. I'll fix those. And I did enjoy getting to play with my drill press and my extractors. I just like playing with my tools. Again, let's keep the comments clean, guys. Um, so I think I'm going to keep this one. This will probably be one of my, uh, this will be a permanent fixture in my collection um, simply because it's in such great condition and it's from Lowellville, New York. I'm from Water Watertown. Can't even talk. Um, so this was made not far from where I was born, and uh, and that's cool to me. So uh, I guess I'll wrap it up. So thank you guys for watching, uh, especially for those of you who stuck around to the end and listened to me rant. 
about all kinds of crap. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, thanks for watching. Uh, as you saw, I have other vices that need some attention. So if you like vice restorations or vice project videos, then I'd love it if you'd subscribe because you'll see more vices on this channel uh, as well as some other things. Um, like, comment, that's all great. You know, like I said, if you guys know what this uh, Daily Whopper is called, please leave a comment because I don't know what it is and I, I wish I did. Um, if you know more about the history of the Fulton Machine and Vice Company, um, leave a comment. You know, the, leave a comment. So I said like, right? Comment, subscribe. Yeah. So like, comment, subscribe, you guys. Thanks for watching. This is uh, this has been a fun project. Uh, this old tool fifty three signing off. Man, I am crazy.